With the increasing impact of media and technologies in the instructional process, and the compelling need to digitize learning content to engage different categories of learners, it becomes imperative for teachers to understand how technology can be used appropriately to support teaching and learning. Hello everyone, my name is Lukman Bello, and this is the first class in week 5. In the previous lessons, you have been exposed to the fundamentals of learning management systems and how to set up your virtual classroom. Here, we are going to examine the expanded definitions of technologies in education and focus more on the framework for selecting appropriate technologies for teaching and learning. You know why? Because the use of technology is a means to an end, not an end in itself. Therefore, we need to understand the framework for selecting appropriate technologies or media resources to enhance teaching learning process. All right, let's look at the framework for selecting appropriate technologies for teaching and learning. But before we go into that, I want us to look at the expanded definitions of technology within the teaching learning process, because there are a whole lot of misconceptions that people have about what technology should be in education. Before now, or the traditional belief about technology has been that technology is the hardware or the um, the equipment, the physical equipment that we use in the classroom, like computer or uh, mobile phones, iPads, um, interactive whiteboard, or even multimedia projector. So people believe that the functionality, the capabilities of technology is really within this um, physical equipment, the hardware component of technology. However, using technology in education goes beyond this physical equipment. It has a whole lot of to, things to do with pedagogy, with the content, and with the appropriateness of the technology you want to select to facilitate learning. Because technologies are merely tools that can be used in a variety of ways. But what matters more is how technologies are applied in teaching learning process. That is the basic thing that we need to consider not the hardware equipment. So simply introducing new technological equipment or hardware components into the classroom is not sufficient to create a media-rich learning environment that, that will engage learners. So there is now a shift in the focus of what technology should be. There is an expanded definition of technology given by scholars. So I want us to look at the definitions provided by Tony Bates 2015. The first one is that technology is a tool or platform to facilitate learning. Look at this. It is a tool or a platform. So it's not necessarily uh, the hardware component, component. Tool in the sense that it might be computers, um, iPad, mobile phones, and some other things like that. It can be platform. It can be virtual learning environment. It can be learning management, all these learning management systems and other platforms like that. Anything that has to do with um, tool, or platform that you can use to facilitate learning is what we call technology. Now, the other perspective is that technology is used to solve educational problems. That is the essence of using technology in the classroom. You are faced with challenges, maybe to teach large class in your, in, in your course, then you bring in technology to solve that kind of educational problems. Using a combination of multimedia resources like text, audio, and video to meet diverse needs of learners, that's a good way of using technology, combining different multimedia resources to solve problems and meet the needs of different categories of learners in your classroom. And that takes us to technological change and obsolescence. What this means is that what is effective today may cease to exist in the future because of the proliferation of these technologies. So if you use a particular technology today, it's not something that you rely upon forever. So that existing technology may be replaced with more productive technologies. So this is what is referred to as technological change, which could lead to technological obsolescence. What is important for you as an efficient teacher is that you should be able to select the appropriate technologies. Okay, look at this term now. It's not only technologies. Appropriate one should be able to select appropriate technologies for teaching and learning. And how do you do this? And that is where the framework comes in. So the sections model 
by Professor Tony Bates provides a framework that can guide you when you are making decisions concerning technology use. This section's model is a combination of eight variables that should be considered when you are selecting technologies for teaching and learning. S stands for students, E for ease of use, the cost, the teaching, the interaction is quite important, the organization, networking, then lastly, the security and privacy. Now, all these variables should be considered when you are selecting technologies for teaching and learning. So we quickly go through these variables and you see how they help you in selecting appropriate technology. Number one, students. Now, at least you need to ensure that three issues related to students should be put into consideration when choosing media and technology. Your learners are the most important aspect of the technology use. So you need to understand the characteristics of the learners. If you don't understand your learners' characteristics, there is absolutely nothing you can do to select appropriate technology for them. Three basic issues that you need to consider are the student demographics, the access, then the differences in how students learn. Now, the second component, the second variable of the sections model is the ease of use. Any media you want to select should be user-friendly and require little effort to use. It's not something that students will find it very difficult to navigate. So it is important that students do not have to spend a great deal of efforts and time on learning how to utilize a particular medium or navigate an instructional platform. So if you see that a platform will be very difficult for students to navigate, don't use it. Then the third one is that you need to look at the cost. The school management and the teacher need to consider the cost of producing the media. Now, if the cost is not within the reach of your organization, then you cannot implement it. You consider the cost and how your organization will be able to bear the cost. Or if it's you that will bear the cost, do you have the capability? Can you afford the cost? Or if it's your students, what cost will your students uh, bear in using such a technology? Then you should consider all this. Now, the teaching functions is also important. Identifying appropriate technology that will deliver effective teaching is an important responsibility of the teacher. So that is why the services of instructional designers and media professionals are required. Because you are using technology to facilitate teaching learning process. So the teaching function should be there. The technology should have the capability to deliver exactly what you want to teach. So if the technology is not educationally effective, why do you need to use it? You don't use technology to impress your learners. You use technology to deliver instruction. Another one is interaction. We all know that interaction of any type, whether student-student interaction, student-teacher interaction, or student-material interaction, is quite important in any instructional setting, whether blended, face-to-face, -face, or complete online. So when you are choosing your technology, when you are choosing technology for your classroom, you consider how that technology will be able to facilitate interaction and engage learners. So you select media that promotes all the patterns of interaction. Now we have organizational issues. Now some of the critical issues that could influence the selection of the media are the way institutions structure teaching activities. That is quite important. Some institutions may think introducing technology will change the pattern of instruction and they might resist it. So you need to consider that the level of existing instruction, instructional and technological services, then the kind of support that you will need okay, to use that technology. Within your organization or within your school system, you should be able to think about it. Do we have uh, the, the required support in terms of human resources and uh, infrastructural resources to use this technology? If these supports are not there, then you don't need to select that kind of technology. Now, networking is important. Also, that is the seventh component, that is the seventh variable to consider um, in uh, selecting technology for teaching and learning. You know, students need to in interact and collaborate with other experts and colleagues from different parts of the world. So networking is important to consider which technology you want to pick at a point in time. You need to determine how a medium will afford your student to the opportunity to network beyond the course. 
they should be able to interact with uh, experts and other colleagues outside the classroom environment. Then lastly, you need to consider the security and privacy, okay, of both the uh, institution, the learners as well, and even you. So you need to consider the capability of the media to protect you and your students from external influence. Now, for instance, on learning management system, your students should be able to contribute to discussion forum on different issues without being harassed. And that is why learning management system like Moodle provides password protected access to registered students and authorized instructors. These eight variables should be taken into consideration and we guide you in decision-making process. If you follow this and you consider all these variables while you are thinking about using technology in your classroom, then you will be able to select technology that will facilitate learning. So thank you for watching. In the next class, we are going to look at other technological tools and platforms that you can use to facilitate learning.